Shalom. Today we're continuing to investigate various facets of Hebrew verb structure. There is a peculiar situation where sometimes you will only find one root letter in a conjugation. Previously, we have talked about this terminology where the first letter of a root is called pe hapoal. It's the first letter of the root. Ayin hapoal is the middle letter of the root and Lamed HaPoal is the third letter of the root. So the first circumstance that governs this possibility is when we have a Lamed He. That means the third letter of the verb is He. For example, Ra'a, to see. When this verb is conjugated in the future, it looks like this, quite normal. However, in the circumstance where there is a conversive vav, or what some people call reversing vav, in Hebrew it's called vav hahipuch, when that vav is attached to a future tense verb, many times we read it as the past tense, and perhaps you're familiar with this concept. What happens in the forms that end in he is that when they are in this reversing vav form, they will lose the he. So, for example, in Genesis 1, 4, V'yar Elohim et ha'or, and Elohim saw the light. So, normally, he will see would be year e, it would have a he at the end. But in these circumstances, in verbs ending in he, when they have the reversing vav in front of a form that would end in he, it drops the he. So, instead of V'yar e, we see V'yar. This is strictly biblical language. It's not in the spoken language. In another example, Genesis 35, 7, Vayiven sham mizbeach. So this is from the verb bana, to build. Normally, he will build is yivne, but that ends in he. So when the reversing vav comes before it, it is reduced to vayiven. It's not only for the third person masculine, here is an example of the third person feminine, Genesis 21, 19. And God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. She will see is usually tir e, it ends in a he, but in this reduced form with the reversing vav, it loses the he. Here's an example of the future tense for we will do something. Jeremiah 3510. So we see two other verbs that are in the imperfect reversing form with the nun prefix we will. Neshev, we will dwell. Nishma, we will listen. And then we have the verb ose, which is ayin, sin, he. But in this form, with the reversing vav, it drops a he and becomes naas instead of naase. This is the first parameter where we're going to see these one-letter roots. The second parameter is for some verbs which are drop letter imperfects. So that means when they go into the imperfect tense, they drop the first letter. So here we are talking about a pe nun verb. Pe is the first letter of the root, and that letter in this example is nun. We're looking at the verb nasa, to lift or carry or to bear. So we see that in the future tense, the nun is completely gone. Esa, tisa, tisi. The nun in the we form is for the we, not for the verb root. So when these two problems collide, a pe nun verb with a lamed he verb, for example, nacha, which means to smite, we're going to wind up with just one letter of the root appearing. The nun drops off because it's in the imperfect, and the he will drop off because it's in the reversing vav imperfect form. Exodus 2.12. Vayifen ko vacho vayar, and he saw, ki en ish, vayach et hamitzri vayitmenehu bachol, talking about Moses. So he turned this way and that way. Also, pana is a verb that ends in he, so we don't say vayifne, we say vayifen, it loses the he. Vayar, and he saw, he looked around, loses the he. 
and then Vayach, and he smote the Egyptian. The only thing that you see from the root is the Kaf. The Vav is the reversing Vav, the Yud is the imperfect He will, and the He is dropped off. Here is another example, Exodus 9.15. Ki ata shalachti et yadi va'ach otcha, and I smote you. The aleph is for I will. All we see is the kaf. Here is the we form in Deuteronomy 2.33. Vayitnehu Yehova Elohenu lefanenu v'nach oto, and we smote him. In Jonah 4.7, here is a third person feminine singular. V'yaman ha'elohim tola'at ba'alot ha'shachar l'macharat v'tach et ha'kikayon v'yivash. So we're talking about the tola'at, it's the worm, and it's smiting the vine under which Jonah is sitting. So we have the vav for the reversing vav, the tav for she will do something, that's because the tola'at is feminine, and all we see is the kaf for the smite. It's interesting because a letter cough is based on the open palm of the hand with which you might smite somebody. Now we saw a future form of I will smite and that is olive cough. However, in order for it to be in that form, it would have to be preceded by a vav. It turns out the word ach is a very common word and it's translated in a multitude of ways. Uh, surely, yet, but nevertheless, However, we're, we're only going to have a confusion if there's a vav before that word, ach, then are we looking at, and I smote, or, and surely. So it turns out there are only a few places where that vav appears before that ach as end. In Genesis 9, 5, the ach, and surely your blood of your lives will I require. It appears in Numbers 22, 20, where God is talking to Balaam, and he says, Ve'ach, but yet the word which I shall say unto you. So as in many cases, we have to look at the context to see, is it, and I smote, or, but, however, notwithstanding. One more example we see in Joshua 22, 19, Ve'ach, notwithstanding, if the land of your possession be unclean, then pass over unto the land of the possession of Jehovah. So that is the most common case of this one letter root appearing. The second common case is the verb nata, which is translated as incline and decline. It means to stretch out either towards something or away from something. Again, we have the peinun that's going to fall off in the future tense and the hay that's going to fall off in the reversing vav tense. So here are some examples. Genesis 12:8. Vi atek misham hahara mikedem levet el viyet ahalo bet el. Talking about Abraham, and this is a common verb nata to stretch out your tent. So we see the vav, reversing vav, the yud for he, and all we see of the root is the tet. Jeremiah 15:6. At natasht oti naum yehova achor telechi vaat et Yadi alayach, and I stretched out my hand towards you. The Aleph for I will. Again from the incident of Balaam, Numbers twenty-two twenty-three. Vetereha aton. The aton is the the donkey. It is feminine. Et malach, and the donkey saw the et malach Yehova, and the donkey saw the angel of the Lord Nitzav Baderich standing on the road. And his sword is unsheathed in his hand. And the donkey stretched out, inclined itself away from the road where the angel is. So it is said that the tet can represent a snake. And here is a stretched out snake. I found one other example of a verb that acts like this. This is the verb naza. Nun Zion He, which means to sprinkle. This reversing vav form is only found one time in Isaiah 63.3. Pura darachti levadi, ume amim en ish iti, ve edrechem baapi, ve ermsem bachamati, 
ויש ניצחם על בגדיי, וכל מלבושיי אגאלתי. It's a little bit of a difficult verse to translate. The tense of the verb here is a little bit unusual. The wine press I have trodden alone, and from the people groups no man was with me. I have trodden them in my anger and trampled them in my fury, in my hot anger. And even though this verb appears to be and he sprinkled, it's translated in the in a in a passive sense and was sprinkled or and he will sprinkle their blood on my clothes explaining why in the previous verse it says that her, his apparel is red perhaps a prophecy of the returning messiah who we wait for until next time tasimata inayam al hashamayim keep your eyes on the sky your redemption draweth nigh shalom